Now we just had the largest and the strongest solar flare just happen of the whole solar cycle. Now in two weeks, this is gonna come around and this is gonna start facing Earth again. And if it's this active in two weeks, we could have potentially some big auroras, some big issues start popping up. Now we do have more severe weather going on. We do have more tornadoes, more areas for today, for tomorrow chances for large hail, and even our flooding issue has increased as well. Hey everybody, Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I'm going to give you all the latest information on these top stories. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you click the bell so you get the latest information. Now I did repost these, I even talked about it on my Facebook, so make sure you go to links in the description, that way you get the latest information before you become last to hear about it. And you can see it did go all the way up to an X8.8. Very powerful, very strong. Matter of fact, even stronger is out there. It's just not facing Earth, that's all. But it is very strong flare, the strongest so far, and it did cause big issues for us. Now you can see the size of Earth compared to the sun, and look at these flares pop up. Watch how big and strong this gets. That was very powerful. If that was facing Earth, it would have been a huge problem. And it's coming around in two weeks, and they're wondering, if it, is it going to be quiet, or is it going to be intense, just like this, again? And I will keep you updated when it comes around, so we can see what the intensity could be, what is going on. So make sure you click that bell and select all. Now, for today, we have very strong temperatures. All this orange is going up into the 70s. We have the 80s in this darker black color. We get in the 90s, where you have all of this white but over here, like the higher elevations over here for California, that red, that's going towards 800. Now, when you add heat indices, it's getting strong over here for Texas going to northern Mexico. But look over here for southern Florida. Now you're getting up to 100 degree heat indices for today. Matter of fact, you have some drought that's going to be headed your way soon. And our severe weather did ramp up for today. So you can see your chances for tornadoes has grown. It's not just for those storm cells going across Florida. It has grown into the 5%. You also have a 2% from the upper level low swinging around the Ohio and Tennessee valleys over here for the Carolinas. And that next storm system coming in is bringing that 2% and that 5% also. So here's your cities and states at risk. There is a complex system moving through. You also have the wind threat for today. Even grown threat over here for Florida and the Carolinas. Even significant wind, potentially hurricane force in this black hatched area and this 30%. Please be aware of that. Here's your cities and states at risk for the damage of winds for today. We also have the chance for the hail in the same locations. Plus, not only that, the pattern we're going into is going to bring a lot of precipitation into these storms as we go on in the coming days. So they're going to get stronger. That's why your flooding is going to be worse as well. And we have some potential wildfire smoke that's going to come in from Mexico and get pulled into Texas. So we'll give you all the latest updates on that. Now we will go to the zoomed in model run. Let me show you real quick what you're looking at. As you go through the day, you still got them storm cells pushing through Florida, bringing in chances for tornadoes all even long. Matter of fact, as you go through this afternoon, it will lower down the western coast. This is going to help with some precipitation because you do need rainfall. This also is going to bring strong cells over here on the west side of Florida. Watch out for potential water spouts. And as you go through the afternoon, you can see the upper level low spinning over here for the Tennessee, Ohio valleys. They started getting strong storms building up for the Carolinas as you go through tonight. That's bringing you chances potentially for some thunderstorms growing up to maybe some damage and winds, maybe some hail, maybe even a chance for a tornado as that spins up. Matter of fact, as we get in all this heavy rainfall, as we get in this potential wildfire smoke still getting pulled into Texas and Louisiana, it also maybe a squall line is going to form up from all the heavy rain going from Texas into Louisiana. I think we will get a bigger section. Now you see as you go into tonight, then it starts kicking off over here for the South Central, bringing you chances for your tornadoes, and it will last all night long with these storm cells all the way till tomorrow morning. Then for tomorrow, it's going to grow right back again as these storm cells moves over Wisconsin and Illinois. You got more brewing up for the South Central. And this is where a lot of precipitation is coming to this storm cell. And look at this. Look how thick those storms grow from Texas into Louisiana. And there is your squall line. And remember last time I warned y'all about the 80 miles per hour winds pushing through? It did happen. Also over here for Florida. We will see if this 
trends in the coming runs, that's a little concerning, especially with the amount of rainfall that's going to be in that system. And you can see this here. You got a lot of heavier rain moving over Florida. This is hoping with your drought, but it's bringing strong storms. Also, as it moves into Thursday, look how this flows up with very heavy amounts of rainfall. This is your precipitation. And this is going to bring a lot of flooding as you go Thursday into Friday for Louisiana and move towards the coast of Mississippi as well. Bringing a lot of flooding. You have two days of moderate risk levels now. This is also, unfortunately, bringing more chances of tornadoes. So as the upper level low moves over, you get a little 2% over here for southeastern Missouri, southern Illinois, western Tennessee, and Kentucky, a little bit of northern Arkansas. But also over here on the south central, you get chances for tornadoes. So this is for tomorrow, for Thursday. Here's your cities and states at risk for the tornado threat. And you have the wind threat also for tomorrow. Not as strong as today, but still some strong winds might be through Texas. And you have the hail threat almost in the same locations even chances for significant hail at least two inches in diameter in that black so here's your cities and states at risk for the hail threat as well and you can also see with all that heavier rainfall coming into that storm system as we go into friday it is growing again even chances for significant severe in that black hatched area that was our 15 percent we've been watching for days now here's your cities and states at risk for the severe weather for friday you can also see this is going to bring a lot of storms. So this is your lightning strikes you can see for today. You get this over the Carolinas. You get what goes over Florida. Then you get what builds over here for the Central Plains and the South Central. Now, when you get a lot of lightning strikes, all that white, that's indicative to a lot of lightning strikes, a lot of updraft. Chances for large hail as you go through the night, or as it goes through Oklahoma, Texas, a little bit of southern Kansas. And as you go for tomorrow, it keeps building in the South Central, mainly for Texas and all through the DFW all the way towards Houston, bring in large hail as you get all that heavy precipitation. And right after this, as that pushes towards Louisiana, then it's going to pull in some potential wildfire smoke. And it's not just unhealthy for sensitive groups. This is going to be unhealthy for everybody. Not the hazardous level yet, but it is going to be unhealthy. And you see, as you go through Friday, all that lightning, all them storms move through the southeast. And that is what we're seeing on the updraft. Felicity, chances for your hail threat. You can see they come across Florida with those storms a little bit for the Carolinas. It starts building up for the south central. Then as you go into tomorrow, that's where it really strengthens up these storms. And look at the trails of the large hail coming through Texas going into southwestern Louisiana. Right where y'all just had all this wind damage. Now for today, you do have the chances for the hurricane force winds. And as these storms brew up, as it comes through the panhandle of Oklahoma and Texas, even from eastern Colorado going into western Kansas, as all that brews up for this evening, this is where you have the chances for those winds. Very strong winds pushing through, showing 50, 60. Some can even spread spark up the chances of 70 that's what that brown is so far the highest is going through mexico maybe going to southern texas that's why you've seen it up to the 80s and 90s that's that storm cell pushing through showing some very strong storm cells for northern mexico as well you need to watch out for that that could be a potential supercell right there as that goes by but showing it is still bringing a lot of flooding. Matter of fact, we have two days of the moderate risk now. Now you can see over here for the South Central for your chances for your rainfall. It goes all the way down towards Southern Texas, but not as much as Northern and Eastern from Houston to the DFW. Going anywhere from one to two, one to three inches. Oklahoma, Southeastern Kansas, Missouri, Northern Arkansas, Southern Illinois. Look how it gets heavy towards Louisiana, Mississippi, Southern Alabama, and this is where it's the heaviest, where you've seen anywhere from three to four inches, a big heavy strip, a three to four with some hot spots somewhere in here for five or maybe for six. Keep your heads up about that. That is a lot of flooding. Now for today, you still got the marginal for flash flooding going all the way towards Missouri, Illinois, a little bit of Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee. But you got this big slight risk that's still growing all the way from Texas into Oklahoma, a little bit of Southern Kansas, a little bit of Southern Missouri, Going into Arkansas, a little bit of Mississippi. But from Texas to Louisiana into Mississippi, this is where your moderate level risk is. This is going to cause some big time flooding. Just be aware of this. If you're in this yellow section, it will be flooding on the streets. But if you're in this red section, it's going to start flooding very quickly as the rain comes down. And it's not just for today. This has stretched because of all the heavy precipitation getting into that storm. Now for tomorrow, you do got a marginal going all the way up towards Ohio Valley. 
You got a slight risk that has grown now for eastern Missouri, southern Illinois, a little bit of southern Indiana, western Kentucky, and Tennessee. But now you have over here in the south, instead of the slight risk, now you got this moderate level risk that is growing. So here's your slight risk as you go into Friday. Here's your moderate level risk as you go into Friday for Mississippi. This is where the heaviest flooding will be all the way into Alabama. Plus, don't rule out your slight risk of flash flooding. It's going to cause issues for a lot of people. Now, as you go into Saturday, this is going to calm down and it's going to lose its severity. But you can also see from your wildfire smoke when you look at the GO satellite, you got these fires brewing up over here from Mexico. So as you get those storms brewing in all day today, then it starts moving over as you go in to tomorrow. Look at this. You get chances for wildfire smoke to come right into Texas. And that would be a unhealthy level of smoke. Matter of fact, the unhealthy level we had was like this very light pink up here. This is getting the strong yellows in there as you go Thursday afternoon, really consolidating in the atmosphere going to northern Louisiana and stretching a little bit into Mississippi as well. This would cause unhealthy air conditions for you. So just be careful. I will keep you updated. Usually when I use this model run of the GOES satellite, it shows severity like this, but when we actually get to the event, it will calm down more like this. I will keep you updated. But for tomorrow, the heat's going to return again. You got all the 70s moving up all the way into Canada now. You got all the 80s and all this dark black color. You have 90s where you see it turning towards that white. Also over here for the southwest, you got the 80s and you got the 90s start creeping in. But for Texas, this is where it creeps in from northern Mexico. You got the 80s, you got the 90s, and the 100s in that red for northern Mexico. With your heat indices, it will be strong for Texas. It will be strong for Florida once again for tomorrow. You're going to be in the 90s for your heat indices, maybe even touching 100. For southern Texas, you're going to be touching 100 down to 110. So here's the latest hazard map as we go from the 22nd through the 28th. You will have excessive heat moving in. It will be over 100 degrees, over 105 degree temperatures moving in for southern Texas. And they're expecting the drought to start and continue for southern Florida. And it will grow further to north as well. You can see you do have a slight risk over here for southern Florida while you're getting that chance for that drought. And when you look above the moderate section, all the way from western to central to eastern Texas, going into southern Louisiana, you're going to be in a slight risk for the excessive heat watch. This is going to bring you into the 90s. Now let's try and get a timing on that. Remember, if you've never been here before, this is your timing date on the top left right there. That is central time. This is chances for your tornadoes. So as we go through the morning, what you had already, look, it will go all morning long, continuing bringing these nasty hail cores. This is traveling all the way to Jacksonville, all the way to Daytona Beach, all the way from Tampa, all the way towards Palm Bay. As you go through the evening, it's going to move a little bit further to the south. This is where it's going to come down Florida and help with some of the precipitation because you do need it badly down there but it's not going to be super strong as what you have for today. Today, after this moves, you will lose all of your strength for the afternoon. Also up here for the Carolinas, you got chances for your tornadoes as well as these cells grow into the afternoon. As you go around dinner time, 5 and 6 o'clock, you start getting some strong hail cores start pushing right off the coast. But this is where this line of storms pushes in as you get that upper level low, swinging everything around. This is where you have it going anywhere from 5 to 6, maybe even 7 and 8 o'clock. Potential strong storms pushing through. Just be aware of that. It's not showing a lot of strength. It will be isolated in nature. And if you do get a, a quick spin up, it will be exactly that. A quick spin up and it will go away. But around the same time for this evening, this is where it's going to grow as you go towards the panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma. Pushes more to the east for Kansas as well as you go through the night. Not seeing a lot of hail cores, a lot of strength in there. Just be aware of that that is looking like a weak event. Maybe the strongest will be somewhere around 7 or 8 o'clock. So just watch out for that. Then we have what's going to brew up for tomorrow as well because now we got our chances for tornadoes in the south plus over here for us moving for the Tennessee, Ohio Valleys. So as this moves to the east, you can see for 
southeastern Missouri, southern Illinois, some of Indiana, western Tennessee, and Kentucky. As you move through the evening for tomorrow, you got these storm cells moving through. Looks a little stronger on the southern side. Still don't see any strong hail cores in there, but still it could bring a quick spin up in this line of storms. Not showing much. That might actually go away in my opinion. Now over here for Texas, this is where you're starting to get all that precipitation move through. And as you go through for tomorrow, the storms build. Stronger on the northern side, as you can see the hail core is a little weaker on the southern side. But as you go through the afternoon, then you get that daytime heating kicking in. Now it gets a little stronger over here from Austin towards Waco. And as you go through the evening, look, it builds more towards eastern Texas. This is where it's going to travel towards Louisiana as well and that is going to grow also as you're going through 6 p.m for tomorrow look at all these hail cores even chances for large hail in there traveling through then as it goes all the way from tomorrow night goes into louisiana look at these hail cores that this model is saying could produce while these storms are pushing across and don't forget about the tail that's traveling through houston as you go late night, early in the morning. Those tails are really famous for whipping up tornadoes. But look at this. Literally, large hail coming to the same areas, potentially, that had all that wind damage. Even maybe some strong cells passing through the city right over Lake Pontchartrain. So look at that. That is showing chances for very large hail to come out of those cells. Be warned, I think that could be updated a little bit more. Thank you for your time, everybody. I hope this helps you understand what is coming. We do have a threat for severe weather for today, for tomorrow, and it is strengthening up from what I just showed you. I think it will be a little more elevated, especially for the chances for hail. Now, we'll keep you updated on what's going on with the solar flares because this is coming all the way back around within the next two weeks, and it will be facing Earth again. So make sure you subscribe if you want updates on that. And before you go today, Proverbs 25, 25 through 28. Some wise words. As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. A righteous man fallen down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain and a corrupt spring. It is not good to eat much honey, so for men to search their own glory is not glory. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Prepare for these storms coming through and get ready for that flooding because that will be no joke. All glory does go to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh, and always hope he keeps you safe, you and your family, and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you in the morning.